so hungover. I'm not going to lie to you. Jordan number seven is my friend. He's the vendor. He's a bad man. So if we have this tradition every time we're in Charlotte. We go out and get wrecked the first night that we're here to celebrate being alive. I don't know what the hell we do. It's such a weird tradition. I haven't seen you forever. Let's get so inebriated that we feel bad the next day. But we, I learned nothing from it. I refuse to learn anything. I stopped learning in the ninth grade. I don't like to be told lessons. Um, so guys, happy to be here. We are jet lagged to hell. Me and Ruth and uh, Rob were in Scotland last weekend and it's hilarious. She had to translate for us. I couldn't understand anybody. Like we had a panel and everybody was talking like nervous and quiet in a Scottish accent and I'm like somebody would talk for like two minutes and like, oh there's a little bit dear to it. I'm like, I have no idea. No idea. Oh, and what made me like the worst thing I understand this in Scottish. This question is for DJ and I'm like, oh fuck I'm not gonna understand any of this. So guys, we're gonna play a little game called the World Shittiest Game Show. Has anybody ever played that before? Awesome. For those of you who haven't, it's shitty. So here's what happens. So I'm gonna pick a number between one and 235. Um, and every time you ask me a question, or you really say anything to me, especially today since I'm hungover, I'm pretty vulnerable, so I probably will answer most things. Um, so anytime you do that, you take a guess at the number, and you win something crappy from my bag. Um, let me, uh, it used to be like a handful of pills or something, but they frown upon that these days. So you, you'll get like, you'll get something that won't cause problems. Hold on one second. So the number is, what is it? That's a great one. Okay, 13 is the number. That, that, that would be a really shitty game show. Um, the number is, It won't be that, so don't guess 83. Okay, I did it. It's a combination of two numbers that I really, oh no, did I just tell it? No, I didn't. Um, it's really shitty. Okay, so let's see what you can win. It's I, there's probably a lot of stuff in here. Uh, let's see. Condoms, no. Uh, hold on, let's see what's in here. There is. This is a business card from Lisa DeVito Linderman. Uh, I don't, she's an owner, designer, and paper obsessed. Um, her name and address here, I can sign that. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Oh, you can't have that. Um, <laughs> uh, oh look, it's a giraffe that has bat wings that somebody knitted. Oh, I know, I could probably sign that somewhere. Uh, let's see. See what else? Here's an Emery board. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of crappy things. Uh, one, let's see, let's get one more prize. Life have three prizes. Oh, here's some hand cream. I love this hand cream. I'm addicted to my hand cream. Hold on one second. <laughs> have you ever seen a famous person put on hand cream? We do it just like people who are not famous. <laughs> Two pounds forty a tube, which is like what three dollars? Um, you can't have that. Let's see, that's alcohol. I need that for later. Hold on. <laughs> oh, the so the oh oh oh, it's the giraffe, a business card, or a supernatural pin that I thought was a toothbrush and didn't pack my own toothbrush and then had to walk to CBS last night. And Charlotte is dicier than I thought. Like, <laughs> I, I felt unsafe like four times, and I live in Los Angeles. Anyway, it was it was like, uh, but here's the thing: somebody knew my name and kept calling my name, and, but not in like a oh DJ like this DJ. And I'm like, I was like, I see we met. Um, so there's this, that, and a business card. So we're gonna. Oh, this, they said this was not greasy. Now the microphone's lubed up for somebody else. <laughs> Ink a bink a bottle of ink, a cork fell off, and you stink. Hi. Hey, bestie, I don't stink. Hey, girl. You don't stink. That's key. My, my question is, what's your favorite scary movie? And I am Kima. 
I know your name. I just, I, I actually, did you hear me say that's Kima? Uh, so what's my favorite scary movie? Nightmare on Elm Street 3, because they all get powers. And I have dreams all the time that I have powers, but they're broken. Do you, you ever have those dreams like you can do magical things, but you're like, well, I, why can't I make this work? I know I can fly away, or I know I can I have this power. It happens to me all the time. Um, but speaking of dreams, which you didn't ask about. Oh, this is how this works. You're gonna ask me something, I'm gonna answer about 30% of it, forget what you asked me, and then tell you something you didn't ask, okay? That's the way it is. Um, so, so I used to have problems sleeping, and I, used to, and I used to take Ambien, and then one time I woke up and had, I bought a pack of cigarettes, and I don't smoke, and uh, a chocolate milk that I drove to 7-Eleven and bought after I went to bed. Like I drove on Ambien, right? So I stopped doing, I stopped taking Ambien, and, uh, and, and I, also I would do things like, I would go on Amazon and buy a bunch of shit, but the cool thing was, sometimes I would like pay my bills, like all the stuff that I would do, like chores and stuff. But anyway, you can't drive when you're asleep, they frown on that. And so, so I stopped taking it, and then I started doing sleep hypnosis, and here's what I do, I, I lay in my bed, fully awake, um, in pajamas, I love pajamas. I can't sleep without pants on. I only stopped sleeping without socks on like two years ago, but now I'm sockless. Um, so I picture a doorway in, my, in the middle of whatever room I'm in and three steps up to it, and I know when I open that door, I can be anywhere. So I'll walk through the door and start doing this. Where am I? Oh, I'm on the side of the road. What do I see? There's a, a diner across the street, right? So over the years of doing this, I've created all of these, all of these worlds that I go to, and, and I have this one that's an 18th century, it's, in the, it's like a late 1700s mansion in the British countryside. And I always get into the carriage and go see uh, uh, Lord Glasgow across the way. But recently I started having an affair with a carriage driver. <laughs> <laughs> and I like this guy. Being unconscious is my favorite state of being. What did you ask me? Well, scary movie. movie. I did answer it. What's your favorite scary movie? I don't have one. You don't like scary movies? No. I love them. I love being scared. Here's the thing. I actually hate being scared. I watch scary movies like this. <laughs> and I always felt bad about that, but my friend Goran Bogdan, he's the Tom Cruise of Croatia. It's hilarious. Um, but he, I, he's a big, burly man, and he, he came to visit me when I was living in Vancouver, and he watched movies like that. I am not alone. <laughs> um, hey, Kima, what's your guess? 11. Uh, nope. That is one of my favorite numbers. But you didn't win. It's okay. Uh, 11. It's really not 11. No, it's not 11. 11 is my favorite number. 8 and 11 are my favorite, are my angel numbers. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Avery, and I'm about to enter my 20s. So I was wondering if you had any advice for that. Oh God, being in your 20s is awesome. Everything is where it's supposed to be. You don't have a stomach like Play-Doh. Um, you recover quickly. Being in your 20s is awesome. Um, but here's the thing, your 30s and 40s are, are way better. So the thing is, don't wish your life away. Don't wish to be any other age than you are right now. Um, don't stress. Like, that's, my 20s were all stressy because like I was really angsty, I wanted to be an actor, things weren't happening exactly how I wanted them. And now I look back at photos and I had a, a stomach that was not like Play-Doh and I wasted it. <laughs> Have a good time, do not stress. Everything is, the one good thing about life is that everything is temporary. So if you're going through something, tomorrow's gonna change. So just relax, have a good time, have a great life. You know how old people tell you that you can do anything you want, it's, and it's such a cliche, it doesn't mean anything? It's, it's absolutely true. I thought I went $120,000 in student loan debt in my 20s to be a lawyer and hated it so bad that I, and then I quit and defaulted on those loans and destroyed my credit and became an actor. And look at me now. <laughs> uh, Avery, what's your, what's your guess? Enjoy your life. You're so young. You can do whatever you want. You are adorable, too. You didn't win. Hello. Hello. Here's the thing. I can't say that, well, I can't say that you didn't win because the number is, yeah. Hi. My name's Aunt Shelly. 
Hey, Shelly, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing fine. Um, let me write your name down. Okay. It's Shelly with a Y, isn't it? Yes. I remember. Thank you. It's the only thing I ever will remember. <laughs> um, what, oh, wait, you didn't ask me anything yet. Oh, yeah, just give me your guess. Let's get, let's get the business heavy lifting out of the, at, off the top. 16. 16, you didn't win either. <laughs> you are terrible at this. got the role on Lone Star Stay Mine. Oh, um, they offered it to me. So I was, <laughs> what a great, interesting story. Um, no, uh, I was doing The New Guy in Austin, Texas, and, um, thanks, I'm white person. Um, I'll take it. Um, I was doing The New Guy in Austin, Texas, and they were shooting that right after that movie, and then Josh Jackson, flew into town and he had casting approval and we met, had a great time and really bonded and The Lone Star State of Mind is the most fun I've ever had on any set. The head of Sony Screen Gems called me and Josh and said that he would fire us because we wasted $100,000 laughing. Like we couldn't stop laughing. There's a scene, so I am wearing like a weave, like a glue-in weave. Because I, I had new guy hair that was like that short. They wanted me to have sort of like hair to ear. And Josh slapped me, but it just went to the top and the weed went like this. And it was like, like a shark. And I didn't know it. So he starts laughing. And if you laugh in front of me, it is over. And so we laughed the whole day and then we got in trouble. It really is the most fun I've ever had on a set. It's so stupid. I'm playing my cousin, who's the dumbest person I've ever met. Like that's his accent. His name is Walls. Uh, Here's what I did to him. I hate, I really do hate him. He's, he's not just, he's not just uh, stupid, he's also ignorant. So here's what I did. I bought a bunch of antique uh, British porcelain and left it to him in my will. I'm gonna put an ATM at my graveside. Nobody's getting anything, you have to come visit me. There's a limited amount of money you can pull out. You can go once every three weeks or like once every month. I'm gonna fuck with everybody when I die. I'm gonna troll to the very end. What did you ask me? Did you ask me about Steve? I asked you how you got the role. Oh, they yeah, offered to me. <laughs> <laughs> what, once every six months? That seems not cruel enough. I think once every, here's the thing. What if it would be like, at odd times of year? Like, yeah. one time it's eight days, and the next time it's like 41 days, and they have to keep track of it. And it's only available from like 9.37 a.m. to like 2.22 p.m. Yeah. Gotta call my lawyer. <laughs> oh wait, hey Shelly, we, we already got your guest out of the way. Um, hello. Hi DJ, I'm Ollie. Hey Ollie. 43. Oh, right, quick to the point. Um, Ollie. What's your, what's on your heart today, Ollie? Well, my friend has my sweatshirt because uh, she wore a jacket that didn't fit her. Um, so I wanted to know what you would put on a sweatshirt. Um, just like the most epic sweatshirt you can think. Oh, oh, that's good. It wouldn't be myself, um, cause that's weird. Uh, let's see, what would I put on a sweatshirt? Uh, a Prada logo? I really am a, a, design, a like brand poor. I grew up poor in the South. My father was a welder in a casket factory until like I retired him. And so I really do like that. And the stereotypes are true. I'm gay, I'm supposed to like product. Leave me alone. Um, but let's see, what would I put on a sweatshirt? Ty's face? Probably I would do that. He's a cutie. He really is. I would put Ty's face on a sweatshirt. What would you put on a sweatshirt? I don't know. It's a I hard just, question. I know, I just want one cold. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your friend? She's the adorable one. Oh! Oh, that's so nice of you. I'll come down and hug you. Aww. I give you mine, but I'm cold too. Um, think hot thoughts. Okay, so did you already took a guess? Yeah, uh, hey, hello. I'm feeling so much less hungover. Maybe this is the antidote to some bad choices. Hello. 
Hi. My name's Ellen. Hey, Ellen. Hold on, let me go back over here. I'm getting my steps in. Do I have my cell phone on me? Yeah, I'm getting it. These are counting. There's nothing worse in the world than when you take a bunch of steps and your cell phone's not in your pocket so you don't get credit for. Yeah. I don't have an Apple Watch. <laughs> uh, wait, what were we talking about? Oh, your name. What's your name? Ellen. Ellen. What's your guess? 26. 26. What, what did I guess? No. Did you ask me something? You're going to look up and make some in your face. Oh my god. Um, somebody put mayonnaise on my. I hate mayonnaise more than anything on this planet. I hate it. When Ty goes out of town, I throw his mayonnaise away. I hate it so bad. I don't like. If you eat mayonnaise and kiss me, I know that you eat mayonnaise that day. I hate it more than homophobia. I hate mayonnaise so bad. I hate it. And. Uh, Somebody, either Jared or Jensen, put mayonnaise in my door handle. So when I open my, like, when I, so my trailer, when I open it, it spread out all over my hand, and it was raining. So I'm, and I couldn't go in the, the trailer with the mayonnaise because I would get mayonnaise in the trailer and I dwell in there. So I, I was outside doing this. <sighs> I hate it to death. Somebody put fart, like, do you know that fart comes in a can? I do. You know why I know it? Somebody sprayed it all over my trailer. Um, and then once I <clears throat> went into work to get ready, and it was a scene where I'd been hit by a car, so I'm laying in the middle of the road, and there was a gimp suit, like a, a full rubber gimp suit in my trailer, and I thought it was a prank from the boys, and so like two hours later, I'm like laying in the road shivering, because it's raining, and they're like, don't you have that, that rubber suit on underneath the clothes? And I'm like, damn it, Jared and Jensen. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that, they, like, you know what I mean? Like you flinch, you all expect something to come. Um, the, but here's the thing, they could never make me laugh, like on set, like they tried that a lot. Um, there's a scene where I'm walking in and Jared, I think Jared has a medical, like a coroner's report. And the whole thing is, I'm like, I'm like, hey, can I see that coroner's report or whatever? And they you know they don't want it, they give it to me begrudgingly. And I look at it, and so they shot their coverage first. And then when it was my camera was turned around on me, I opened up the coroner's report and it's stick figures doing terrible things to each other. Really <laughs> terrible things. I learned so much and use a lot of it today, but I did not laugh. They didn't get me to laugh. Because once I start laughing, it's over. Um, did you guess? I think you did, didn't you? Are you Ellen 26? Yeah, you didn't win, so. Hello. Hi, DJ. Um, I'm Ira. And what's the range? <laughs> um, what was the range? Uh, 1 to 225? 235. Okay, 96. 96. <laughs> what's your question? Um, I wouldn't okay. tell you. Here's the thing, when I'm telling people they didn't win, I would, that really would make it. I'm not telling you the truth. You're keeping it quiet. Yeah. Um, well, first I want to say all weekends, everyone's getting tired of me because I cannot get you baloney bitches. <laughs> you baloney bitches don't have it. It's a song by a, a lady named Queen Herbie, and there's a line in it that says, "You baloney bitches don't have it." And I now it's in my head too. I've just gotten it out of my head from like it's been in my head for like eight months. It's been nonstop. I've been like bitching. And let me tell you, my friends they're starting to hate it because like I yeah, like I'm the kind of person if something's in my head it comes right out of my mouth, and I'm just like. Bitches don't have it. You have to look. It's Queen Herbie. It's, I think it's it's on. It's a, you can. It's like available like on Spotify or some shit like that. Yeah, it's, but, uh, listen to it's it. called Lavish. It's called La Oh, it's called Lavish by Queen Herbie, and the and the U is a V, so it's Q V E E N Herbie. Yes. What's the oh the song's called Lavish? Yeah. Oh wait 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 wait. I think I bought it. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna do it to you. So speaking of this, what I'm getting ready to do to you, I was doing the show called Z Nation and the focus puller was in his mid to late hundreds. And so a focus puller, so when I did that show, I just, I shot with a double because I was shooting Man in the High Castle at the same time. So I would just go in and most of the time I was at a computer, I was at a computer screen. So I would just sit there and the guy, he would just pull, the focus puller just 
you know, they're literally focusing the camera. So he takes a tape measure from the end of your nose or whatever range of movement you're doing to the camera to know how to pull the focus as you go to, during the scene. And so I realized he was really susceptible to getting things stuck in his head. So like, it would make me laugh so hard that this man who at his age would, would walk around going, oops, uh, da -da -da -da, damn it. Like I would always get like that kind of stuff stuck in his head. And then one day he came up to me and said this, hey buddy, do you know what sounding is? <laughs> it, don't look it up. I know, really, I'm telling, it's not something that I'm telling you to then look up. If I tell you not to do something, I really do mean it. You should not, I, I wish I never got this stuck in my head. Sometimes at quiet moments when I'm by myself, it comes back to me in an echo. It doesn't want to be off. We have too much free time. It's because I think the moment we got out of the cave, we're like, let's put this thing somewhere inside of my body. It is bad. It is bad. Why are we talking about that? Oh, the song. Don't make me think about sounding. Anyway, it taught me a lesson. I never fucked with him ever again. He won that one. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, here it is. Right at the top. A Timu? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I, I bought everything on Timu. I'm addicted to it. Um, the best Timu purchase. Oh, I have this caddy in my bathroom um, that has all the like products and stuff organized, and I think it was like thirty dollars on Amazon. Do you know that you could, if you go on Timu in spot or Amazon, you find something. You usually, can find that same thing on Amazon for like a third of the price. Um, so that was a really good thing that I bought. Um, usually what I buy on Timu looks like it's supposed to, but I bought a set of angel wings to wear at a convention uh, in Austin, and they were this big. <laughs> I don't know what angle that they shot that from, but they literally were this big. And I'm like, yeah. They, and they were, but they were like, here's the problem is, there is a price threshold on Timu. Anything above $4 usually will be good. Anything below four dollars will not be what it's supposed to be. You have to, that, that's my fault. Wings cost seventeen dollars. If a pair of three dollar wings, of course they're going to be that big. Or maybe people are smaller than <laughs> whatever they make tea with. Um, did you ask me something? Oh, that was it. Um, what's yours? You, tell me yours. Do you buy things on Timu? Yeah. <laughs> like I have the app on my phone. I deleted the app for my phone. Oh, you're smarter than me. Yeah. My dad is really bad at it, where he will give, he had like, he bought a gorilla t-shirt that he loves to wear, like just everywhere, just full face gorilla. I want that. Um, no, he'll wear it like, wear it to like parties, like events, everyone else is dressed up and he's got his gorilla t-shirt. Buy gorilla t-shirt. <laughs> okay, I found the gorilla t-shirt. Yeah, you can. I want to do that. Well, I'm, I'm going to write it down. Gorilla. You baloney bitches! Timu. Perfect. You guessed 96, didn't you? I'm on it. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Molly. Lisa. I'm lavish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just want to say you baloney bitches don't have it? It will help you. Honestly, yes. Yeah. yeah, say it. You baloney bitches don't, don't have, have it. it. That's right. Does it feel good? Bitches. What, <laughs> what's your name? Oh, I'm AJ. AJA. 
Got you. What's your guess? Uh, 87. I can't remember what the number was, but I wrote it down. <laughs> What's your question? What's on your heart today? Do I have a drink? I do. Uh, my question is, what's something scary, supernatural that's happened to you on any set that you've worked on? Ooh, I, I don't know if anything on oh, supernatural's happened to me on any. Oh, I, I shot a movie that's coming out actually uh, later in the month, I think, called Carved. It's about a pumpkin that becomes sentient and kills people. And when when, they, when my management sends it over, the assistants read all the scripts and they do a short, like one line thing about what the script's about. And I look at it and I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. But it's they were like, you should read this. It's actually pretty clever. And I and I love dying on camera, and I've only done it twice before. And once I got my head cut off with a chain, no, I killed that person. Um, yeah, I've only, I've only died once before. I've died twice now. I got my heart ripped out, and I got my head cut off by a chain. Um, so I've died, I've died twice. I really wanted to die, and on camera. I, I'm not going to die in real life. I'm looking into it, believe me. Um, but, wait, what were we talking about this? What, what did you ask me? Something scary that happened to you on set. Oh, yeah. So we were staying in the Shaker Village, which is like, a, an open air museum at Colonial Williamsburg, but this one's in Kentucky in the middle of nowhere. And the Shakers are people that moved into the wilderness in the early 1800s and gave up comfort. And they thought it made them closer to God or something. Um, and like Shaker furniture has no padding. So I, I, I checked into this room and get there and everything is a hardwood, uh, no padding thing. There was a heat lamp in the bathroom though, which I really appreciate because I hate being cold. Um, but um, that night, I kept hearing things, and I went out and took my camera. Um, you know, they say you can see ghosts and stuff. Like, if, like maybe if you can't see them, you can see them like on video. So I went out and went back to watch the the video. And I find myself at like two o'clock in the morning, and this place is like huge and cavernous, and I don't know my castmates yet. I'm, it's like my second night there. So I start looking at the video back, and their lights, these little lights, are moving all over the place. So the next morning, I go down to breakfast. I'm like, look, I, ca I think I captured a ghost last night. And that's, that was just the reflection of the light. So it wasn't actually anything supernatural. And I felt stupid. But I do believe in that. Um, I saw a man who used to live in our house. And I thought I was making it up. And when I was, like, I remember when I was being like seven years old and seeing a man with a white t-shirt and red hair walk through our house. And I remember this distinctly, and my mother saw the same guy, and we, and we talked about this when I was an adult. We never talked about it when I was little. So I, I do kind of believe in stuff like that. Um, I also think that if it can't be disproved, then not believing in it, like, you have no proof that it doesn't. We, we, we had no idea what happens after we die. Like, even people who have died and come back, they, they're not dead. And also your brain can dream you, can really try to tell you anything. I have no idea. Do you believe in the supernatural? Yeah. Like the TV show or the <laughs> It is real, I promise. Um, but you believe in like ghosts and shit like that? I do. See, I don't know what I believe. I, I went on this show called Hollywood Medium and I, I talked to my grandfather. There's there's no way this 19 year old kid, Tyler Henry, could manipulate me. He knew things I've never told anybody, things that I had forgotten. And also I denied something and I was later told like he said that my grandfather was there with two twins who died at in, in infancy, and I said that wasn't true, and my dad said that there were a set of twins that, stillborn twins that were born after he was born, he's the youngest, and I, I had no idea, and he didn't talk to anybody in my family, because my family's a bunch of rednecks, and they would do this, Hollywood called us, like there's no way that they talked to anybody in my family, because I would have heard about it, anyway, um, nothing supernatural has ever happened on a set, otherwise I wouldn't go back to work. <laughs> You baloney bitches don't have it. Um, what did you guess already? You did, didn't you? Oh yeah, we got it out. Your age. All right. Thank you for playing the world's crappiest game show. I'm gonna clean it up here toward the end. Hi. Hi. My name's Leah. Leah. Uh, Leah, and my number is 118. Yeah. What did I do with that pen? <laughs> 118. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your name? Via. V I A. Oh, that, that means way, doesn't it? Like that means way in Italian. It does. Maybe. Your name means way. Um, what's your What's on your heart today, Dia? Out of all the supernatural 
supernatural characters, which one do you think would do worst in the in a escape room? In an escape room? Uh-huh. Oh. Ellen? She doesn't seem very patient. Yeah, I bet she would do, I bet she would probably be like, <laughs> Yeah, she'd be very mad very quickly. She's also one of my favorite characters, and in real life, I love, I love Samantha Ferris so much, because she sounds, she's, she's a DJ, like, like actual DJ on the radio. I love people that when they talk, they sound like they've garbled razor blades. Like, I think it's, her voice is so sexy. But yeah, it probably, Ellen probably would not do well at a, at a, uh, an escape room. I think Garth would do relatively well at it. He's very patient. He's so patient. I am not patient. I do not do well in escape rooms. I get mad like 12 minutes into it and I'm mad the whole time. And then when I see the solution, I'm like, what's well, stupid? <laughs> you do? I don't think I've ever successfully completed one. I don't think I have. No. I don't know, did I? I can't remember. Um, Via, what's your guess? You guessed 118, didn't you? Yep. I got one. Hello. Hi, DJ. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, my uh, guess is 111. And, oh, sorry, Kelsey. <laughs> What's your name? Kelsey. Kelsey? I have a friend in Canada named Kelsey. Do you know her? <laughs> It'd be awesome if you did. She's a joy designer. What's your guess? Uh, 111. 111? Tell me all that again, but right to the microphone, so I can't hear you. Yeah, if you could go through your own Groundhog Day, and you know that there's an end, what oh, would you do? My own Groundhog Day. Oh, it wouldn't be dirty. Um, it, would, it would probably involve, I love being unconscious. I love sleeping so much. Like, you know, The Matrix, people are like, thinks it's a scary story. I'm like, you're plugged into a machine. You don't have to go outside. I, I grew up on a farm, and when I left the farm, I decided I would never go outside ever again. And now I only go outside to get inside other places. Um, but what day would I live over and over and over again? You know what, maybe the day that I got road trip, um, it was like, I, my life changed in one day. And here's, here's what happened though. Ivan Reitman made me fly myself to Los Angeles on three days notice. I auditioned on location in Atlanta. I auditioned for a one-line part. I wound up getting a lead. But to give me the part, they made me fly myself to LA. I'd never been to LA before. I had to pawn the title of my car because I didn't have any money. Um, I stayed at a Priceline hotel at the airport. I rented a budget rental car. I drove into Beverly Hills to his palatial offices with like Roy Lichtenstein paintings on the wall that were like worth millions of dollars. And then he sat me down and he was like, well, your character does this. Are you okay with like being partially naked on the screen? I'm like, absolutely, absolutely. I'll do it right now. Like I was ready, anything to be an actor. And then he, and then he said, uh, he was like, um, I was like, when do I find out about the part? He was like, oh no, you have the part. And I was like, he was like, who's your agent? And I'm like, I don't have an agent. And he did this, you're hired. They paid me nothing, but it was the best day of my life. Like I walked all over Beverly Hills, like telling people who I'd never met before I was gonna be in a movie. Like, and I was not embarrassed by it at all. That feeling of my life changing, or I, I knew it was gonna change. I, and my dreams were gonna come true. I would probably live that day over and over again. And, if, and, some, and probably at some point, I would punch Ivan Reitman for making me pawn the title to my car and stay at the hotel by the, uh, in a motel by the interstate. Uh, what, do you have a day in mind that you would live over? Um, it's hard, isn't it? It's well, hard to think about this kind of yeah. stuff. Well, it was either something that you would want to do or you haven't done or a day that you had passed that you wouldn't really live over again. Oh, does it have to be something that happened to me? No, it could be anything. It could be something oh, that maybe it would be dirty. I'm a good boy. Um, I, don't I don't know. Um, I would say I really enjoyed Epcot when I was a child. I went there to see all the pop culture. I've that. never been to any. I, I only been to the to Disneyland, and I only went recently, May 12th in 2022, and it changed my life. It's a day that I will never ever forget. I loved it. It was awesome. Um, and I've been back like six times. But I've never been. To, I've never been to the one in Florida. Orlando reminds me of a giant TGI Fridays. Like the whole town reminds me of that. Which I like, but I only like to be in Fridays for like an hour and a half. 
the Orlando airport is one of the scariest places I've ever been because it is tight-lipped, newly broke parents sniping at each other. Like, would you control your kids? I've had enough. Like, that's what Orlando reminds me of. But Epcot sounds nice. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I like it more than Disney World and Disneyland. My parents were like, what is wrong with this kid? I'm like, I don't know. This is why I enjoy it more. So I really liked it. Um, I believe in the magic of Disney. I love it. Here's the thing. There is a trick that you can use. I don't know if it's all Disney Worlds or Disneylands or uh, both. I should picture two of them. No, there are three of them, right? There's like one in Paris and one in Tokyo. There are a lot. Um, so I don't know if this works in every one of them, but you can go to the front of the line in the one in California and you can ask this, do you have any magic? And if the, the person says yes, you and your friends jump line and go right to the front. Okay. Like you do this, hey, it worked three out of five times that I use it, but it could be because I'm on television. <laughs> but, but I don't think, I think that the man, the first man who did it, who was, who was in his mid to late hundreds, um, did not recognize me, and just he, he worked there like probably in the 60s when this started. You go up and do this. Hey, sir, do you have any? Do you, do you have any magic? And he does this. How many do I need magic for? I'm like, there are five of us, and he's like, I have magic for five. Really? Yeah, and you go to the front of the line. It's awesome. The people behind you don't like it. <laughs> it's less magical to them, but it's awesome. Um, did you guess already? I did 111. 111. Oh yeah, Kelsey. Do you know my friend? I forgot to read that. Uh, hi, Kelsey. Hi. Hi. Are we, we're doing the numbers first? Yes, why not? Okay, um, 161. 161? Yes. What's your name? Uh, Sarah, with, without the H. S-A-R-A. Okay. It doesn't matter for these purposes, but I like the fact it, that it you... It matters yeah, to me, though. I get it, I get it. it. You do not want an imaginary H in my name. Well, I don't want it going to somebody else. I get so, it. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so you you mentioned a couple things about your childhood, so I thought I'd ask what your earliest memory is. Oh my god. I remember my mother um, made me a... Uh, my mother made me a birthday cake chicken a teddy bear. I think I was four. My aunt and, and, uh, and her sister... My, my mother and her sister got into a sniping fight about whether it was homemade or store-bought. And my mother wound up taking the cake and dumping it in the floor. Oh. Earliest memory. That's why I'm like this. <laughs> Um, so guys, uh, thank you for playing the World's Crappiest Game Show. The number actually was 117, which means, Via, you won it with 118. Clap for Via. Come to my table and get something shitty. Thank you guys so much. Hey!